Hello again to the Selenium WebDriver tutorials. Today we'll look a little bit deeper in how you can identify the web elements that you are using in your script by way of uh, XPath ID and name attribute where they are available. These are the methods that we'll eventually use. Find element by XPath by ID and by name. We'll need to have Firebug and Firepath installed. For your reference, if you'll need more information about XPath, you can uh, visit the W3Schools link to get more information from there. For this purpose, I created a test application that looks like that. It's not a very beautiful application but contains three nice images two of them from Valencia this and this and another one from uh, Blarney Castle in Ireland and as well as a set of elements that we'll need to identify and use in our test like a text box uh, check boxes, radio buttons, a selection list, a text area, a link, um, a couple of values in uh, different uh, table cells, and a couple of buttons down here. Our purpose is to identify the elements by XPath mostly but also were available by um, ID and name but first of all what is XPath? Well XPath is a language used to ident uh, used for identification of uh, elements in an XML document shortly said uh, there are different nodes uh, in an uh, XPath and these are called uh, elements, attributes, text and these are the most used in our case right? there are a couple of special characters used in uh, XPath for example double slash will identify the current node and at will identify the uh, attribute an example of uh, button selection would be written like this <coughs> in our case the button has the name submit or if we want to identify a link which is an a tag that has a text me we can identify it like this text has a uh, function right so these are the elements that we'd like to identify we already saw them in the application and we can directly go to our code and see how this can be done I have already the code prepared but we'll go through it together first of all we need to prepare a Firefox driver we will need to navigate to the application under test right and then we can identify the first web element which is the image itself and for this one I've used the uh, find element by ID and I supply the ID of the image how did I know this? well if I right click on the image and inspect it with Firebug I can see that the image is having an ID like this right? and we can test it in Firepath 
So if we take, but that will be done when we do the XPath identification. Nevertheless, if I want to identify an um, element that is having this ID, let's copy it. I can paste it here and click eval and as you can see the image was identified there's no point to really click on this image what we can get out of this image is to uh, print to the console the image size right like this and we will get something like that which is the size in pixels that the image is having then I've just added um, slip between each of the actions so we'll have time to uh, see them as they go okay so this is how the image is identified by ID you can go ahead and add the XPath uh, identification of uh, this image at the end of our exercise Let's go ahead and let's see how the text box is identified. And by text box I mean this one. We can inspect the element with Firebug. And we see that we have a name for this text box, S1 input. And the uh, type of the element is input. So for this one I've created a new web element called my text box. <coughs> and I supplied the X path corresponding to it and it is for an input element that is having the attribute name equal to S1 input. We can check it also in uh, fire path. This is perfectly identified and just for the demonstration purposes after identification I'm sending some text using send keys to this text box. Further on <coughs> we can identify the checkbox and in this case uh, I've identified it by name just for a variation and when we insp inspect the code for the checkbox we should find that is having this name S1 checkbox1 okay is having the name S1 checkbox1 and is unique Okay, we can go ahead and see how the radio button was identified. The radio button is identified by XPath and is an input type of object having the name attribute equal to S1 radio 1. We can check it in Firepath to be sure that that's the one that we want to identify. Don't forget to put an extra dot here in fire path. Okay. From the selection list, I've selected the list itself, and from the list, the value one, and then I'm going to click on it. Okay, the text area once again is identified by XPath and by the name attribute. Then the link, which is this one, me, is ad identified by once again by the name attribute.
and after identification I'm going to click on the link then the button is identified once again by the name attribute and finally the table cell and I, when I mean the table cell is this one that I'm looking for is identified by the text that is having and the text inside the table cell is capital city right this text we can ins inspect it of course and we'll see that the text inside is capital city and the um, element type is td okay we can use um, more complex <coughs> identification uh, XPath if we really need using uh, advanced techniques from uh, XPath but we'll find that uh, information in W3 schools uh, uh, website if you really need that one if identification by text is not really enough and what we can do after identification we can print the text from the element just to be sure that the identification was successful we'll wait another two seconds and then close the browser okay so we're ready now to give it a run so let's just run it and let's see what happens okay so the browser is open the text box is populated checkbox is checked radio button is checked first value is selected text area it's populated and then as we can see the the, the image size was uh, supplied like in the first step here where we are getting the Im the image size by way of get size and as well as the last statement printed which was the get text from the uh, my cell capital city which was our capital city cell right and that's it for today I hope to see you for the next tutorial I wish you a great day bye